What's up, guys? I'm Michael Vorpal, and this is the show for those with common sense and who believe common sense is not dead. So if you believe a girl can be a man and a man can be a girl, probably isn't the show for you, and maybe I'm not for you. But on second thought, stick around, because maybe there's some perspectives, some values, some lessons that can bring you back to common sense and really just help execute what we have in terms of our rights of freedom of speech, thought, sharing of ideas, and having civil discourse in the sense of exchanging those ideas, explaining each other's position, and uh, being able to live harmoniously regardless of that, because isn't that what we are founded on? So with that being said, freedom of speech and thought and open conversation and dialogue are what I believe in, in my core and root as an American. Um, and that's what I swore to uphold and defend. So that's what I'm going to execute on this podcast. So welcome to the Common Sense is Not Dead podcast. I'm your host, Michael Vorpal. Yes, I'm an active duty United States Marine. So I want it to be known that this show is in no way an official affiliation to the Department of Defense, United States Marine Corps, or any other agency. The thoughts, opinions, and perspectives expressed are mine and mine alone and do not represent any official remarks, statements, or anything like of the mentioned agencies or equivalents. Long story short, these are my opinions. This is what I see. I'm going to bring you some common sense approaches to it from what I see uh, in these things and the different types of formats for the show. So I have to go over all the legalese because there are some people out there without common sense that can't understand and di differentiate the difference. So I got a CYA and let it be known that this is in no official capacity affiliated to any of those things. And this is my alone. So why am I doing this show? This show well, one, because I believe common sense is a common virtue. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case, but it can become so again. But it's my way of giving back to you, the citizens of America, maybe even the world who hear this. I don't know. But especially the Americans, um, the service members, past, present and future, because this will be there for them to reflect on and look at historically. Uh, but really, I just want to make a difference for you all. So you're going to see a different kind of formats of the show, though. The first format is called Let's Talk About It. That's where I see a headline. I see a topic that is posted somewhere and I bring it down. I read it. I do a little bit of research. I break it down and I provide some common sense based off of my experiences. And I don't like to talk about things I don't know much about. So if I see something or I'm shown something or someone sends me something, I will do my research, formulate an opinion on it, and maybe go from there uh, if I feel uh, confident enough I understand the context. The second type of format is called saved rounds. So in the military, we have this thing where it's like, hey, any saved rounds in the room? That means are there any other further questions, thoughts, or ideas that need to be shared? So saved rounds for me is my way of, hey, I got a saved round, a nugget of information, a nugget of value that's going to make your life better based off of uh, the last 34 so far years at the time of this recording um, of my life, but also uh, over a decade and a half in the military as well and different leadership roles, some things that you can apply in your life, military or um, otherwise civilian. The third kind of format is called uh, scroll and troll, which is probably going to turn out to be one of my favorites, but that's where I'm scr scrolling through social media and I'm trolling. All right. But I'm trolling things that just don't make sense. I don't understand some things that I see. So we're going to save the video. We're going to talk about it. And I'm going to give you that common sense approach to what I see going on as well. In the last format for this show so far is called Full Send. And that's a Q&A style episode. So for us, we say Full Send, like, hey, send all your rounds down range if we're firing our weapons or whatever the case is. So fire your questions off at me. Fire your questions to me. That's what I'm here for. I want to provide you additional value. So in that Q&A section, you can send it, you can post your comments in the, or excuse me, your questions in the comment section below on the YouTube, if you're watching it on YouTube, or uh, you can send them into an email, which is full send for answers at gmail.com. Again, that's full send for answers at gmail.com. Those are the two places I want to kind of congregate um, the questions being sent so that I can just stay organized and best give you those answers. But if you send a super question, well, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. So send a stupid question. We'll see what happens, you know? Common sense is, hey, this is here. Someone's trying to provide you value. Don't be stupid. All right. But I'm not doing this show for free, guys. All right. So I need you to contribute to the show. I need you to help me out. Um, and the way you can contribute is by sharing the episode. Now, I don't want you just to share it, just to share it. I want you to share it because you see the value. It made you laugh. Um, you had a question answered or you respect 
what I'm doing and the perspective that I'm giving to you. And I don't think that that's much to ask. So that's your way to contribute to this show and what I'm trying to do for you as well. I think I'm going to be putting myself in the proverbial crosshairs, if you will, by some of the topics that I'm going to be discussing, specifically one like today where, I don't know, it might get a little dicey. So I need your help um, in order to share the show. Plus, this also shows me and tells me, hey, I, you guys are gaining value from this. And that's one of the key things that I can see is you sharing the show and it growing in order to provide, okay, hey, I'm on the right track. Because if I'm not, I'm not. And I need to know those things. But sharing the show helps me out in that regard. All right. So today's show is let's talk about it. So let's not be dense and let's share com some common sense. All right. As always, you can find the links, the articles reference in the description below. Uh, so you can go read them and see them for yourself. So today's episode, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I am actually going to talk about this. Caucasians. All right. Whites. Apparently we are allegedly the problem with the recruiting crisis. So let's talk about it. So here are some articles I came across. Uh, one says, exclusive, a huge blow, decline in white recruits fueling the military's worst ever recruiting crisis, data shows. This next one, decline in white recruits fuels military recruiting crisis. Okay, so these two articles, um, the main one that I read was from the Daily Caller. The other one, um, the link, I excuse me, the, from where it, uh, came from, it eludes me, but it is in the description. So you can go read it alone um, or for yourself as well. And look, at the end of the day, I can't believe that these two headlines decline in white recruits fueling the military's worst ever recruiting crisis and decline in white recruits fuels military recruiting crisis are even being talked about right now. Like, this is insane. Okay. But Let's get into the article a little bit so that you can see a little bit of context of what I'm talking about. All right. So each U.S. military service saw a notable decline in white recruits over the last five years, according to data obtained by the Daily Caller News Foundation, likely factoring into military's crippling recruiting crisis. The Army, Navy, and Air Force missed the recruiting objectives by historically large margins in fiscal year 2023, which ended on September 30th. As the broader American public has grown wary of military service, according to the Department of Defense Statistics, officials and experts who spoke to DCNF since 2018, however, the number of recruits from minority groups has remained steady or in some cases increased while the number of white recruits has declined, according to data on the demographics of new recruits obtained by the DCNF. The data reviews the decline of white recruits is almost entirely responsible for the recruiting crisis, Will Thabeau, director of the American Military Project at the Claremont Institute, told the DCNF. A smaller proportion of white Americans serve now more than ever. This is a fundamental this is fundamental because complementary complementary increases in black and Hispanic recruits have not taken place, he added. For example, only 23% of 17 to 24-year-old Americans meet the minimum physical and academic standards for joining without a waiver, and fee even fewer, about 10%, express a desire to join, according to an Army press release. The civilian job market may present more attractive opportunities with better benefits, while fewer members of the younger generation are familiar with the military at all, officials say. Young Americans are also losing trust in institutions in general, including the military, uh, including the U.S. military, the Army said. So with that, there's a, there's a lot to unpack here. So let's go back. So what this is saying here, okay, is that be, the, every, uh, apparently race is the major contributing factor as to the recruiting crisis. Apparently every other minority ethnic group, uh, they have stayed the same or risen a little bit. And because they haven't risen fast enough, it doesn't combat the decline of what new white recruits. And that's the reason why we are in the recruiting crisis is because white people are not going in to serve. But that's interesting. I mean, think about this. The minority groups are staying the same and whites apparently are declining. But it 
doesn't end there. My, my main question is that I want to pose to you right now is why does that even matter? Why does the race or ethnic background matter at all when it comes to the sheer number of individuals who desire to serve and who end up serving? As we all know, not every branch struggled to meet the desired force size for the required number of individuals within its organization to provide the best defense for our country. Not every single organization or branch struggled. For example, the Marine Corps and Space Force, they both have been able to achieve their assigned numbers that are needed in order to sustain that defense. And yes, there's a number to that. There's no denying that. But the Air Force, Army, and Navy, Air Force has been right, uh, right along up there as well um, in terms of their recruitment efforts. But the Navy and Army are notably the ones hurting the worst by this so far crisis. But is it because of white people? White American citizens not wanting to join? I don't know. I'm not buying it. But let's hear what some of the organizations had to say about this same exact thing. What we're seeing is a reflection of society. What we know less of is what is driving all these things, an army official told military.com. There is no widely accepted cause. Factors influencing recruiting, recruitment demographics can be complex and multifaceted, an Air Force spokesperson told the DCNF. Additionally, recognizing that Generation Z represents the newest cohort of service members, it is essential to meet their expectations for an inclusive workspace. As we engage with youth, a fundamental principle remains steadfast. The recruitment of qualified Americans who mirror the society the Department of the Air Force serves. The Air Force spokesperson said, we focus on recruiting the best and brightest in America, a Navy spokesperson told DCNF. Marine Corps Recruiting Command does not have any diversity-oriented policies. Applicants must be morally, medically, and physically qualified in order to serve, the spokesperson told DCNF. Another quote is, the Marine Corps recruits the best this country has to offer who reflect our culture and values in every demographic, which is reflective of the American population, the Marine Corps spokesperson told the DCNF. So there's a lot that goes into these. So unpacking these a little bit, there's a lot that goes into this, but let, let's look at something. All of these responses, these official responses, right? Way I'm reading them have nothing to do with race. Absolutely nothing to do with race. Nowhere in there did it say, hey, according to this demographic, this is the reason why, and this is what we're looking for in this organization. Like, like nothing said that. So why are we making the recruiting crisis about race. A lot of people talk about woke. A lot of people talk about um, other things that are going on, other decisions that are being made um, at higher levels and things like that. And yet we are seeing a focus and a headline that says white people and the lack of us wanting to join the military is the cause of the recruiting crisis. To me, that feeds into something bigger However, it is not because of a certain ethnicity that there is this recruiting crisis. In there, it is quoted saying that there isn't, let me, let me pull it up, there is no widely accepted cause, end quote, from an army official told military.com. Look, at the end of the day, headlines like this are more damaging than anything. Headlines like this paint the picture, and you can go read the entire article. And go see the stats and this, that, and the other. Like, look, reading this article and, and putting this out there is absolutely ridiculous when it comes to racial equality, racial division. Like, it is unheard of. Unheard of that it's because of race that we are in a recruiting crisis. I served five years in the recruiting realm, one as a canvassing recruiter, and and three years of that. Okay. That's where I actually talked to individuals and explained the benefits and things like that. But then also as a staff non-commissioned officer in charge. So I was in charge of an entire region, um, or a station. And I had other recruiters that I was helping navigate the challenges in the recruiting world today. And it is challenging 
But I'll tell you one thing. Not once was I ever told, you need to go find this many black people. You need to find this many white people. You need to find this many Hispanic, this many Asian. Not once was that ever, ever, ever brought up to me. Ever. Ever. It was just like the Marine Corps is quoted saying here, the Marine Corps recruits the best this country has to offer who reflect our culture and values in every demographic, which is reflective of the American population. Okay. Also, I can tell you that the Marine Corps Recruiting Command does not have any diversity-oriented policies. Applicants must be morally, medically, and physically qualified in order to serve. Having served in that capacity, I have not that I can say that I have not seen any policies like this is saying that is diversity-oriented. Not once have I seen that or read that in my time as a recruiter. And my first stint was 2015 to 2018. And then my next stint was from 2022 to 2020, this year, 2024. So I will tell you that our active duty component and reserves has nothing to do with race. And I can speak specifically for the Marine Corps side of the house based on my experiences. In fact, it wasn't even a discussion. It was go find the best and brightest. But here's something in this article that I found interesting as well. So as we're saying, hey, apparently it's the white people and it's the, the, the declining of them wanting to serve as the main problem. We find that things are multifaceted. Um, the recruitment of qualified Americans who mirror the society of the Department of the Air Force. What we're seeing is a reflection of society. So really what we're seeing here, OK, and this is what I'm looking for right here. The headline claims it's race. All the data and statistics so far in that article is all focused on race. But let's reread this again. For example, only 23% of the 17 to 24-year-old Americans meet the minimum physical and academic standards for joining without a waiver, and even fewer, about 10%, express a desire to join, according to the Army press release. The civilian job market may present more attractive opportunities with better benefits, while fewer members of the younger generation are familiar with the military at all. Officials say young Americans are also losing trust in institutions in general, including the U.S. military, the Army has said. Okay, so what is it? Is it race? Or is it the civilian job market? Is it the lack of knowledge of what the military has to offer? Like, what is it? Is it race or is it other contributing factors? So this is the problem with articles like this. When And this is the problem when you focus on race. It muddies the waters in terms of what's really going on. And again, five years cumulative in, in the recruiting realm capacity in two different eras of recruiting, okay? It is not race from my perspective. Race is not the issue. And the fact that we are making this a diverse and, and, and a diversity issue blows my mind. Because as I know that there's this thing called equal opportunity that we get annual training every year, and that's where you cannot, and there's policy that says you cannot discriminate against someone's age, race, sex, sexual orientation, and other background and other factors. It doesn't matter to us. I've been serving for over a decade and a half. It does not matter. It does not matter. In other articles I've read, you know, we took pride and I say, and I still take pride. And I know there are those of us who still take pride that it doesn't matter if you're Hispanic, if you're black, if you're Asian, if you're white, it does not matter. We all bleed red. We are green. We are Marines. Okay. At the end of the day, I can speak from my experience. I have yet to ever meet someone who's like, yep, because you're black, I'm not going to serve with you. Because you're Asian, I'm not going to serve with you. Because you're white, I'm not going to serve with you. I'm going to look and treat you different. Not once. And if there are those who are out there, they're pieces of crap and they, des they deserve to be out of the organization. And in fact, go to another country where you can actually practice that because we don't need you here. At the end of the day, it should not be about race. It isn't about race at all.
There is no type of mission that I have ever been given that says you need to go find this many black, Asian, Hispanic, white, other types of individuals, types of American people. We are Americans, Americans. We swear to uphold the and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. We are Americans. We're looking for the best and brightest Americans, and that needs to be the message. The message is it needs to be togetherness. We need to come together. We need cohesion. We need to band together for a common cause, and that is the American cause. Articles like this crap saying that it's the white recruitment decline that goes into the recruiting crisis is ridiculous. This article creates the, the division when we need to come together and be a family. We need to be an American family. We are American Marine Corps, American Army, American Navy, American Air Force, American Coast Guard, American Space Force. We are Americans first. I want you to ask yourself, what are you? Do you go and say, oh, hey, I'm white? Oh, hey, I'm black? Oh, hey, I'm Hispanic? Oh, hey, I'm Asian? What's your background? Who do you identify as? I identify as an American. The melanin level of my skin means nothing. And it shouldn't mean anything to you either. The fact that we're still talking about this feeds into a big, big, big picture. And you need to wake up and grow up. It is not about that anymore. It is about being an American and sticking up for American values. This article creates the vision. And it's up to you and me to see through the BS in order to be cohesive, be a family, be an American family, because that's what it's all about. So I challenge you, I challenge you to share this episode and let's fight through this division when it comes to recruitment, because it is not because of an ethnic background. It is not because of race. It is because the American people need to understand that the armed services stand for what the United States was originally founded upon. The values of the United States of America in which we fought to gain our independence. That's what it means. Historically, we have gone through many battles to find and foster and keep and maintain the values that are still there today at the root of our constitution. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I get fired up about this because it's not about your race. I don't care if you're blue, black, green, brown, or orange. We are Americans and we stand together. So don't be dense. Share this common sense and we'll talk to you all next time.